Hello, welcome to Real Frank Movie Reviews. Thanks for checking it out. This episode, we review the movie Avatar The Way of Water. My special guest reviewer and I will be talking about spoilers. So it's been since 2009 since the first Avatar, 13 years of waiting. It took three years to film this movie, and the movie is three hours and 12 minutes to watch. This better be a good fucking movie. Real Frank. All right, welcome back to the show. The one and only Kevin. Kevin, it's great to have you back, buddy. Frank, how's it going? Fantastic. Uh, have you recovered from watching this movie yet? <laughs> I would say, not to spoil it, but I didn't know this is the sequel that we needed in our lives. <laughs> what is it, 13, 12 years in the making? 13 so... years, yes. Yeah, 13 years. Uh, I. I it's okay. I've already warned the audience about spoilers. We're going to talk about spoilers. I mean, but in reality, are there really any spoilers? I mean, honestly. No, I don't think so. Exactly, right? Um, you're getting more of the same. Uh, I don't think this this did anything new, right? It didn't bring anything new to the table. No. So. The only thing new, in reality, it, it felt like the same Stupid story, in my opinion, because I hated the first one. <laughs> oh, okay, this would be a good conversation then. So. I hated the first one, and this felt like, oh, here we are again, except we'll add they had intercourse and created a family, all right? Yes, right. <laughs> we'll somehow reincarnate the the villain, all the right? The bad guys. Yeah, right? the bad guys in this, you know, Avatar world, yes, right? And then we're going to take over the planet again. Oh, holy shit. Isn't that the same premise of the first one? Uh, pretty much, right? So, but I don't think you watch, I mean, I don't want to jump too far ahead. I don't think you watch an Avatar movie for the original story, right? Right. So they get to go, go with the Avatar franchise. Right. So. Well, just so we don't get even farther, let's summarize this a little bit and kind of give a synopsis of this movie. Can you give the audience a summary of what this movie was about? Yes. The humans are back in Pandora after the first movie. <laughs> They're bigger and badder. And yeah. to me, it's like a cowboy Indian movie, but the Indians are the good guys, basically. Yeah. Right? That's a, that's a good analogy. That's really good because they're all native. But I love my my other part of this movie is you want to go full native, like with the attire, you know, and the tails and stuff, nah. whatever. But they never show the nipple for whatever reason. There's magic oh, stick comes on I the girls. Talk about that. Girls' so, boobies, boobies. We don't show I saw no nipple. Some in the beginning with the wife, uh, and I wish I I wish these characters their names stood in my head. They don't, right? Yeah, it's really I mean, hard I to pronounce. The rest of them, they're just like I don't know what their their names are. Um, I know what roles they play, but so anyway, the wife of Jake Scully. I thought I saw some. You did uh, at the very beginning. And I kept looking for more, and I couldn't see any more. I was looking hard too, and I didn't see. Down, did you see it in three D or in radio? Oh, I want to ask you that. How did you see the movie? I I, I went all in. Like I'm saying, if. I wanted to give this thing a fair shot, right? Because all the avatars about the technology and all this new stuff. I went and saw in 3D. Did you do the high frame rate or not? Do you I, remember that one of those options? It was, I think, it was the high frame rate and 3D. Yeah. So I almost screwed up. I said, "Oh, I want to see it on the biggest screen and around here and see Imagine and Canton. They have this huge screen, mm -hmm. right?" So I bought the tickets, and then I realized I was just buying the standard. The standard viewing, I said, that's going to be a waste of money. Right. So I quickly canceled those. I ended up seeing it in 3D in high frame rate. So yeah. the way it was meant to be seen. But it's like, for me, it's just like the same movie, the first one. I remember going in there. I had a girlfriend. I was like... Yeah, my girlfriend at the time, she was I wasn't married. I was like, Let's go see Avatar, right? <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a go, right? Yeah, so. yeah. Go Avatar, honey. Ooh, we're going to go see Avatar, <laughs> right? And uh, I remember sitting there, had the 3D glasses on, and I was like, holy shit, this movie is amazing. Like the first 30 minutes of it, right? And then yeah. after the 30 minutes, when I started paying more attention to the movie, get like past the, the I was adapting to the 3D, you know, and all that coolness. 
And after I started focusing on the story, I'm like, this is fucking shit. They're trying to shove this whole propaganda bullshit down my throat here. This is all an advertisement for Greenpeace. And then uh, my girlfriend at the time, she, we get done. I didn't say nothing. And then at that point, the movie couldn't get over fast enough for me, the first one, right? So I, mm-hmm. well, my girlfriend gets done. She looks at me. She goes, oh, my God. That movie was so amazing. What did you think of it? I go, I, I hated it. I hated it. I couldn't get out of here fast enough. But. Yeah. I, I could see that. It, it does do this whole ecological, oh, everything's beautiful. Technology is bad. Let's look at one with the nature, right? So, exactly. yeah, I could see your vantage point coming in and saying it's just trying to shove this much shit down my throat. It's like they so. tried to brainwash you with this new technology, a new way to watch a movie at the time, and then they mm-hmm. try to shoehorn this message in your brain. Have right. A cult message. <laughs> uh, so, all right, so that was the first one. The second one, I'll be honest too, Kevin. Because of my horrible experience with the first one, like I never rewatched that movie again because I just refused to. No, I, you know, I watched it again. Um, I, I'm not coming from a place where I hate the movie, right? I saw it back in the day. I thought the technology was amazing. Had not revisited in 13 years, and I went back and watched the original movie. Um, I, I liked it, but then I. I mean, obviously, I'm coming from a different vantage point than you are watching the movie, too, right? Right. So. I mean, that's fair. I mean, oh. you, you like this? That's, that's fair enough. But I. And so let's go to this this way of the water. Way of the water. Yes, the way of the water. So um, three hours and 12 minutes. <laughs> I, I took your advice. I went. I used the restroom facilities before I sat down to watch the movie, right? Because I know it's gonna be a long one. So. <laughs> Why <laughs> did it need to be three hours and twelve minutes? <laughs> now, when you saw it in your theater, was there a lot of people in the theater? Uh, it was packed. It was, I saw it a Saturday night. It was a packed house, All right? right. Yeah. So. I, I saw it on a Friday night. It wasn't packed, and there was a family of maybe six. There's two empty mm-hmm. seats and six. And uh, I was getting bored. Like, I, I, it's like uh, I got bored and then I'm looking around and this family of six, they're talking amongst each other because they are bored. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, so yeah. uh, I'm not the only one that's getting bored here. Right. I, I see that because um, it had a sort of an exciting beginning, right? If you. Then it had this long stretch in the middle mm-hmm. where it's just word building, mm-hmm. learning the way of the water, mm-hmm. learning how the water drive works, making friends with all the animals, introducing this whale creature and making friends with him, spending uh, a long time swimming with the animals. Like there was a lot of fluff that he was introducing just to go do all this world building. And then, if you're not into it, I could see how the three hours drags, right? Kevin, the villains um, disappeared for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> the villains, the bad guys were gone for an hour. I like, did he forget about them in the script? Like, they're gone. Like, we're underwater. Yeah. We're learning to swim. We're seeing this. I mean, the stuff is cool to look at, but uh, excuse me. It's like uh, an hour since uh, they were looking for him. So what's going on with that? Yeah. It, it, that okay, I, I give... Um, the middle part was a little dragged out a little bit, but the villain part of it was a little weird. Like I thought the beginning was cool because he was leading his resistance against the humans, right? Right. Kind of like a cool a resistance cool against scene humans. Where they when you say that stopped, though, that right? that story, the resistance, is kind of similar to some other movies that are pretty popular out there that got a strong following. <laughs> There's nothing original about this movie. I think it's Cameron is showing you he wants to do this why you would technology. Yeah, right? exactly. Um, Say so what you want, I still think Cameron could do some cool action set pieces. Um, so what stood out to be was the train sequence at the beginning and the way they took down the two helicopters that came in mm-hmm. and then 
he introduces his villain. He's reincarnated from the main villain in the past. He's now a Nabari now. And all of a sudden, Jake, they want to kill Jake Sully. Right. And Jake Sully leaves. Mm -hmm. But then they don't do a thing against the tribe that lives, that was attacking on this stuff. That felt a little weird to me, right? Yes. This whole thing felt weird to me. It just felt... <laughs> I mean, you got to I my my logic is this, Kevin. It took uh, yep. three hours, it's thirteen years for the sequel, right? Yep. Three years for them to film this movie. I mean, we got COVID yep. in there too, but okay. And they're saying the estimate for this movie to make is in the three hundred fifty to four hundred million dollar range, okay? Mm -hmm. And they're saying for this thing to be profitable. It has to be the third or fourth highest film of all time for this thing to actually make money. Now, the technology is fantastic, and I kind of felt like – I'll put it to you this way. That whole hour where we lost like a, a, the movie part of it, the villains, it felt like a yeah. Discovery Channel show to me. <laughs> <laughs> right. How do the water people love? Exactly. How do they do everything they need to do? Right? Yes, it felt so. like a fucking discovery. I'm like, I paid money to see a 3D Discovery Channel show here about the the ocean here and these fish people and swimming in this new tribe. And I, you know, he's been fascinated with the underwater since he made that Titanic movie, and he's had yeah. a whole documentary on it. I think he got a little waka waka waka. After that, because I felt this was what it turned into for at least an hour. What did you think? Uh, yeah, it was a little long. Um, uh, not a lot was happening, right? It, and if you don't like the characters, right? If you don't believe in the family structure, or none of them are clicking with you, yes, I could see how that would. Yeah, yeah. Would drag on and drag on and drag on. But the the so. family culture, I mean. All right, he created a family. We learned about the family, but then we need all this buildup of this family. And it's not anything new from Hollywood. It's a typical family, right? You got the dependable yeah. son, the, all the responsibilities on him. You got the whacked out daughter, you know, paranoid. She's got all these feelings. You know who played that daughter? I didn't realize this to the end. Was, I mean, still didn't realize this. You know who played the daughter? I think it was what, Kate, Kate Winslet? Or was it Kate Winslet? Oh, I thought it was Sigourney Weaver. Oh, could it? It could have been. I, I, it's so hard to keep getting these names right and then trying to tie them up with the the actors and that. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, that could be it. I totally believe that. Okay, and then the 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 crazy troublesome son, you know, that's oh, misunderstood. Oh, and then you got the baby, right? Everyone's caring about the baby. Oh, the baby, the baby, the baby, right? Yep. What are we doing here, James? James Cameron. 13 years. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I, I still put money in James Cameron. He, he tends to buy all the critics, right? This could very well make $2 billion. I have no idea. So That's true. I, I agree with you. I think they'll pull it out of their ass, right? I think they'll make profitable. But I think the third one is not going to do it because they have nothing new to offer. No, I think the third one. I, I think the third one would actually be cool. You think like, so? I do think they set up the third one to be cool. So. But we already know what's gonna happen, right? But can he pull off the spectacle? If he does what I think he's gonna do, is like, okay, Jake Scully realizes he can't hot run. He's got to take the fight to the humans. Is that spectacular? Are the battles and the fighting is it going to pay off is it going to be something cool to see on the screen kevin kevin we've seen this movie <laughs> he's all about the green peace and war it's going to be how bad war is all over again people are going to die we'll see. We'll see. the worth the earth is the one that takes the or the planets take the most damage us people are pigs we destroy everything um <laughs> Good guys win. There will be some yeah. loss. Uh... <laughs> it, it was funny, too, the motivation of the humans. Like, pretty much all humans are are greedy. Yes. Bad. Uh-huh. And they have this weird thing they pulled out of their, where they kill these whales to harvest their glands. Yes. Anti-aging serum. Yes. Right? 
Like they forgot all about the mineral from the first one and they moved on to something else. That's so, <laughs> so no, true. So, that's right. The whole new thing. Now they added, you know, destroying the planet and, and people and humans are bad. Now we added, we got to save the whales. Because let's just say they, they were whales, right? We got to save the whales. Right. Now it's not for the oil. It's for the stuff they pulled from the brain. It's about this big of a cup. And it's anti-aging yeah. because us humans, that's all we care about is our physical appearances. Ah, James Cameron. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, yeah, it was a little interesting when they do that curveball and why are they killing these whales and there's reason. So, yeah. So. And then the ending. How was how was your opinion of the ending with uh, well, all of them trapped? Okay, there and... was a lot of set pieces in this one, right? Yeah. Um, what did you think, before we move to the ending, what did you think of the different set pieces? Um, did any... I, I just don't want to talk about the ending because that was a big part of the movie and that was a big battle. But is there anything that's like for you, like action wise, that. There's nothing that stood out to me. Um, Even I get... when they were, like, the kids got captured in, in the beginning and they took and they had a pitched battle. Nothing. No. Uh, you know how. Okay. I, I know what he was trying to do, right? It, it, Trying to build yeah. build up these characters, want you to fall in love with these characters, build up an emotional attachment to these characters. That's why I spent so long on this whole yeah. part. All right, I totally get that. But me, they could fucking die for what I care, because I hated them. <laughs> I didn't like them. I'll be honest. I mean, I wanted something new and original. I waited 13 years for this shit, and I'm getting the uh, same crap. Not, no, this this is a franchise ain't for you. This is not really It's not. Original. It's it all about not. pretty pictures and the technology. It's about yeah. Greenpeace. It's a pretty picture yeah. with messages galore shoved in my face about how shitty humans are. We're just shitty people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So let's talk about the ending because that's, I think, what everything is building up to. Yes. What did you think of, like, even they set up the ending, right? Like, oh, we're from the... The boy made friends with this whale. Mm. You find out these whales are intelligent beings. But don't forget, the whale was also abandoned and misunderstood. Don't forget about that. <laughs> yeah, that too, because trying to get revenge or whatever. Uh -huh. And then they spent this whole chase sequence on how, how they hunted down and killed the whale. What do you think of that extended sequence? Because that was a big... 10, 15 minutes at it, least it was. That, right? yes it was and again I don't know why it needed to be part of the story I don't understand why it needed to be part of the story I think other than a message to show how shitty well, they are I, I don't know I think it was foreshadowing like here's all the vehicles here's all the equipment this is how the equipment is used um, that was my take on it right all setting, all pieces setting up the final big battle. So when the big battle was going on, you knew what these crab creatures could do and what these boats were doing, what these subs were doing, right? Right. So. But it's, we've seen this story though. It's, it's three hours and 12 minutes, right? We didn't need a three hours and 12 minutes. It's, it could have been an hour and 45 minute movie in my opinion, right? If they would have just cut it down story-wise, not dragged out all these scenes. All right, I think. Then you would have, the camera could not do all his underwater stuff. He exactly. Do. Right. Did you see some of that? I w looked up that stuff and uh, I read, this is, I looked this up and uh, let me see my notes here. Uh, oh, there's only two shots, two shots in the entire film that contain no visual effects. I believe it 100%. Isn't that crazy? And nearly, yes. and this is the other thing that blew me away when I looked this up, nearly all of the water in the film is computer generated. <laughs> and I read all these actors that were in it had to do all this training and they did all this filming for the movement. So that when the characters were moving, they had those suits or what, those dots yep. in to get the correct mm -hmm. movement. But as far as the water in the film, hardly any. And that's just crazy. Wild. But I think they were in the water right when he filmed them. Yes, they, they were in the water. They were swimming all those things because he wanted those movements to look realistic or natural yep. in water. But as far as on the screen of what we saw, that was all digitally Everything enhanced. Yeah. So. I mean, that part alone so, is amazing, right? If that if you just look at that part, 
fantastic. As long as you don't get soaked up into that, which you can easily do, specifically if you've seen it in 3D, it's very easy to get sucked in, and then you're like, oh, this is amazing. But if you step away from that for a little bit, you look at this movie as a whole, the writing, the project, that's just my two cents. I just think it's a piece of shit. Now, I, I knew you'd be a critic of computer generation images and yes. CGI. How would you rate this? Did anything, I think there was only one scene I thought didn't feel right. I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, but I, I guess let me throw it back to you. How do you rate the CGI in this? It's, it's by far the best CGI I've ever seen. The, I can only yep. think of one scene. Um, it was when uh, the the reincarnated general guy was trying to make uh, tame one of those dragon things. Oh yes, I think I. That's and the background, like the mountains and stuff, I, I didn't understand. It. it looked like cartoonish. It didn't look like the rest of the movie. But that was it. That was the only thing I caught. And I, but the rest is by far the most amazing CGI I've ever seen in my life. How about you? Yep. Yeah, I think bar none, obviously, you know where the money is being spent, right? It's being spent on digital effects, making everything look like like. Um, even going back in 2009, Avatar, that that still looks amazing to this day, mm -hmm. right? I don't think anybody has caught up with that yet. No, the, the money, probably the money. Yes. What, what was your scene that you saw that you questioned in the CGI? I, I think it was a... It was, I mean, it, at the time I said it, and I didn't write any notes down, so it was hard to remember, but I, I agree, it's that scene that you picked up on was was a little too cartoony, a little too fake, right? Yeah, so. right. So our, I've read, too, that the third, the third one, so they already got the third one in the can, right? It's already done, and that's going to come out, I think, next year. And then based on what that one does... They'll either green light two more, but he has written scripts for two more. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they'll end it with the third one. Now, how do you you feel about that, or you don't have a opinion on that or anything? I think I'm excited for the third one because if it truly is like okay, we're gonna take the war to the humans, and we're not gonna spend so much time on world building and talking about. Uh, how we make friends with the animals and I think that that could be very interesting to see right because you get bits and pieces of it during the movies um, but to see a true conflict resistance that could be exciting so we'll see so maybe a Star Wars for the water ages yes <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly I mean, I, I, so, think, I think you nailed it. I think that's what's going to happen, right? I mean, that's that's the inevitable, right? Everything's been on the planet of Pandora. Yeah. Now they got to take it over there, right? Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. So let's talk about the ending set piece because I think that was the highlight of the movie. Even if you're bored by the first three-fourths of the movie, how did the, the final set piece hold up to you with, with them taking it um, fight to that ship, right? Yes. Trying to rescue their family members. Right, right. Uh, it, again, just like everything in this movie, it was drawn way too out, long. I mean, mm -hmm. there was not no reason for that, right? Now, uh, the boy, the one kid dies, right? That's the only spoiler alert, but we already identified in the previews that we were going to talk about some spoilers. Now, yeah, I want to talk about that too. So obviously you weren't invested in the characters, right? So yes. When he died, it probably meant nothing to you. Listen, though, Kevin, before we go, I knew he was going to die. Yes. <laughs> it was obvious, right? You knew it too, right? Uh, Yeah, I wasn't really in that mindset, but I wasn't going to, like, I, I knew someone was going to die, and he felt the most logical. He right? was going to die. Otherwise, and... there would be no consequences to what they did. Exactly. And that's a James Cameron, if you look, the last one, consequences. This was consequences. And he's his father's right-hand man, all the responsibility on him, and he died. I, I saw that coming as soon as he was uh, pinned that character. I was like, oh, I, if I had, was with someone, I would have leaned over and said, he's fucking dead. But I was by myself, so I was like, in my head, I was like, he's dead. 
<laughs> okay. Yeah, I would say that his goal with that, I think, was a. You would have to believe the characters. Um, you, I mean, there's all can be jarring people, but you have to believe the performance and stuff. I thought his actual death scene was sort of cool because he just like died, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, like if I think someone was dying like that in real life, that's how they would do it. They would just breathe one second and just be dead the next second like that. But <laughs> <laughs> but there, that was no great surprise. I knew someone was going to die right. for sure. Yes, and and he was the most logical one looking back on it. For so. sure, right? Exactly. They can't have the misunderstood boy, right? Because no, because he was like the star of the movie. It was everything was about him. Exactly. What a, what a jerk he was, and he really wasn't a jerk. And then the baby can't die because they never kill babies on movies. And what do you think of that human feral kid? That spider. Was he annoying? The spider was he annoying to you at all? Or did you... Yeah, it was ridiculous, and <laughs> I don't understand that character at all, or why we needed that character. To be honest, I understand it's the son of whatever so and so, but. Who did he fuck? Did he? Who did he have the kid with? I don't know. I just was thinking I was on I, I don't remember him from the first movie. I don't remember any baby from the first movie. That's where I was right. so confused. Like, what happened there? Who did he bang? Right. He banged somebody, right? Yeah. And then he's there. And then I became... The thing that I became obsessed with was with the scenes he was in. Like, because he's the only human, right? And I was like, how are they filming this? Like... He's the only one there. There's people in costumes, or how is he interacting? Is he on a green screen and, and doing all this stuff? That's that's what I became more obsessed with than that actual what he was, you know, the movie part of it. And his motivation was weird. Like it was like I'm with the Navi, and then I get captured, and I start helping out these people. Yes. Like it was, and even at the end, he goes and saves the main villain guy. Right. right, and, and so. that's ridiculous too. So we got to deal with this guy in the third one again. It makes it's just it's just stupid. That's the other part I hated about this movie. This guy was killed in the first one. He's reincarnated. Yep. He's gonna die again. Oh, and they save him. I mean, this guy got nine lives or something. It's ridiculous. Oh, he'll die. They'll just clone him again. I don't know. They'll keep bringing him back for sure. So, did uh, you see it by yourself or with your family? No, uh, <laughs> no one's interested in the Avatar franchise in this family, <laughs> except for me. <laughs> so I saw myself, right? <laughs> my, <laughs> my, I tried to show my daughter the first one, and she checked out halfway through. Yeah, well, she's wise. She's wise. <laughs> <laughs> so she left. <laughs> all right, let's, let's talk about our favorite parts. Do you have a favorite part in here at all? No, I think it's the the ending scene. I know it was a little too long, but when well, there's two scenes, I, the shark the shark scene was sort of interesting to me, right? Um, oh, was there any jump scares that got? You? I mean, this isn't a jump scare movie, but yeah. anything that got you, no. like any nothing, nothing. Okay, I did get. When, when the boy was saved by the whale, and then he, I thought he was on some rocks, and then the, it turned out uh, his spout opened up. Yeah. I wasn't ready for that. So. Yeah, I mean, no, no nothing surprising to me in this movie at all. And yeah, I, I, I know. I, so, anyways, I, go back to that. I, the ending battle when the whales are attacking the ship, I thought that was a cool scene. Right? Okay. To me, that was a highlight for sure. Yeah. Well, you knew. They were gonna help. I mean, it was pretty obvious. Yeah. You know, they're saving them. They're well, friends. Well, all the time with the whale, though, for the whale not to be in the final action scene, that would have just been surprising. Exactly. So. Exactly. Jamie is a little underwater world. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a hundred percent. So. All right, man. Let's just go ahead and score this thing. So. Ooh. I can't wait to hear your score. So overall, what do you give? this movie 1 to 10 10 being That's the best one. 1 being the worst I'm gonna go high as I think at the end of the day I enjoyed it even with the whole extra long this documentary that was in the middle of it uh, I will give it a 7 a 7 a solid 7 huh yes. I think I am all in on the third Avatar movie. I am ready to see where that goes. Mm -hmm. So, Underwater Star Wars, he's all in for. Yes. 
let's kick the humans off the planet and see how they do that. Oh, so. Seven, all right. I mean, I mean, you liked it? That's good. Okay. For me, overall, James Cameron, you made me waste three hours and 12 minutes. That's why I'm giving this a 3.1. The only thing that saved Ooh. it for me was the CGI because it was phenomenal. But the story was <laughs> garbage. Fucking garbage, James. I expect more. 13 years, three years to make all this new technology, and you give me the same fucking story from the first one, you piece of shit. That's what I think of this movie. A 3.1. That's harsh. It is. And I knew going in, this is how it was going to be. You know, certain movies in life, you get pumped up to see, really excited about going to see at the movie theater. I knew going in, this was going to, I was hoping it wouldn't be like this, but I had a feeling going in and I did not really look forward to going to it, especially when I saw the time for the movie being three hours and 12 minutes of a underwater documentary about some fake people that live in the water. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I see your vantage point, right? Either you buy into the characters, they or you buy don't. into them, and if you don't, it's like a slog of a time. A slog right? of a time. So, yes. Are you gonna see this movie again? No, Avatar is a weird franchise, right? So I saw the first one once, never thought about it again. I don't, I don't feel the hype of this movie, right? Like. Right. I'll probably watch it. I'm not going to watch it in theaters again. Uh, maybe when it comes out on Disney Plus, I'll watch it again. But you got to commit three hours. You can't. I mean, if you watch it at home, you're not going to watch it all at once again, are you? No, that's like over a couple days, right? Yeah. Hour here, hour there, hour. Yeah. <laughs> Fast forward to the good scenes or whatever, right? So. Exactly. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever watch this movie again. I don't see no reason to. Like, for me, it's not a memorable movie. Like,. But you will be there. I bet you'll be there for the third Avatar movie when it hits the theaters. I have to, Kevin. It's my job. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it's a weird franchise, right? It's like, yeah, uh, it doesn't stick around like Star Wars or Star Trek or no James Bond, right? It makes all this money, yeah, and then it disappears for years. For years, so, and and the only people really yeah. remember that's memorable is the technology, right? No yeah. one talks about the movie itself, the story, whatever. It's always about how you saw it in 3D, how it was so cool and amazing. It's not about the movie ever. That from what I hear from people, I don't know if it's different from what you've heard. No, I just don't. It doesn't feel like me talking about the franchise overall, right? Um, it's just something they see in the movie theaters because it's cool and it sort of fades away. Exactly. It's a, so we'll it's, see what happens with this one. It's just what exactly it is. It's a amusement park Disney World ride yes. movie. Yes. That's what it is. Yes. That's the way I could sum it up. Well, the next time you go to Disney World, you can go to the Pandora World, right? Yeah. So. I did go there what, in 2019 before COVID. And uh, we I did the boat thing. That was okay. I was supposed to do the virtual thing but we missed our time slot so i didn't get to do that one yeah i think last time i went it was before all that yeah. so i have never had a chance to experience it so well i mean you experienced it in theater <laughs> i saw it in the theater for sure so all right so kevin gives it a solid seven i give it a 3.1 that's our review for avatar Thanks for checking it out.